Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast. I'm your host, Tanner, along with Mason. What's up, guys? And today we have a lot to talk about. A lot of stuff has been happening in the NFL, um, including a lot of changes in terms of teams' coaching staffs. So that's what I want to say. First off, um, there's been a lot of hires. I think we have about five of them that have happened. Let's talk about personally my favorite, and that is the New York Jets hired Niners defensive coordinator Robert Sala. Sala is now the head coach of the Jets, and I love this move. The Jets were very kind of just a terrible team under Adam Gase, to be blunt, and I feel like they really lacked that energy. You saw it a bit at the end of the season when they got those, like, two wins. So I think that's something Sala can feed off of. Um, he's also bringing um, Mike LaFleur, um, the Niners quarterback coach, as the – OC, so that's a great move for them in terms of the offense. I really like this move. I think the Jets are going to be a pretty decent team. Um, if you want to talk about that move, Mason, what you think about it? No, yeah, especially since I'm a Cardinals fan, I see Robert Sala twice a year. Um, I think this is a great move for the Jets. I think, I think what Adam Gase didn't do is he didn't the, he didn't make a culture in the for the New York Jets, and when you don't really have a culture, your team kind of lacks. But I think Robert Sala is like a perfect guy. You look him out of the sideline, he's he's got all the energy in the world. He's a very good coach. And I think he's gonna bring a he's gonna bring a good culture to the the Jets. I think they haven't had for a very long time. I mean they had Todd Bowles and they had Adam Gase, but I think Robert Sala is gonna build a new culture in uh New York and hopefully turn the franchise around. Yeah, I think that he's also going to be very strict and to the point in a good way because that's what you need when to sign about quarterbacks. What's going to happen um, with Darnold or taking a new QB? And, you know, Darnold doesn't play well, but he seems like a really nice guy. And, you know, you got to – Darnold gets traded away. People are used to him, so they're probably going to be unsure. I think Saul is just going to be a very good person to really help that team. He reminds me a lot of Sean McDermott, Pete Carroll, John Harbaugh, and two out of those three have a Super Bowl ring at the time of recording this. Bills could be getting one here soon, but overall, I really uh, like it, and it's my favorite hire. Um, Mason, what's another one of your favorites? Um, Personally, my favorite is going to be the uh, Jaguars hiring Urban Meyer. I think to get a guy like him, a lot of college coaches that are like, highest of the highs, like the Nick Sabans, Lincoln Rallies, they don't usually come uh, out of college to the NFL, but um, Urban Meyer, the Jaguars convinced him. They gave him a lot of money, so he really couldn't turn it down. But uh, I think Urban Meyer is a great fit for this team because I think the Jag, like Doug Marone, he was a coach for a long time, but it, it really just seemed like the Jags had no direction after the AFC championship loss. And I think Urban Meyer – I mean, you look at a college, he won everywhere he went. Um, he won two, I believe, two with uh, Florida Gators and uh, a natty with the Ohio State Buckeyes. So, I mean, he, he brings a winning culture, and he, he's really good at getting his players to buy into what he's, he's coaching. And I think you really need that. And you pair him along with the number one pick, who presumably is going to be Trevor Lawrence. I think that's going to be a good pairing between uh, those two. And I think the Jaguars – if I'm a fan of the Jaguars, I'd be really happy about um, the future with Urban Meyer, in my opinion. Yeah, I really like that. That's my second favorite behind Salah. Um, I like it for a lot of reasons. It really helps build the culture. That's something you touched on. The Jaguars are just not popular. Like, if you look at their YouTube channel, I'm currently looking at it. Their videos hardly get any views. They hit, like, a 1,000. They barely have any comments, hardly any likes. And this is, you know, a professional <laughs> sports team. So. <laughs> It's really not that great. Um, like you said, Doug Marone was just not the fit. Uh, I think Myers can bring a lot of respectability. And I read something that the Jaguars haven't had a Monday night game in a couple of years or something like that. So I think they're going to have big-time games. Also, people are like, oh, I wish they hired someone else to help with Trevor Lawrence. But Meyer has dealt with a lot of quarterbacks who have been very good at the college level. So I think – uh, that will be, you know, a good move. Also, there's talks that 
they might hire Raheem Morris as the DC, which I think would be a good move to bring in someone with an, some NFL experience to help Meyer out. No, yeah, I completely agree with that. And for people who don't like like the pairing between him and Lawrence, and they want someone to, or like if they somehow go field or someone else, but I'm going to say it's Lawrence. Just that's my uh, prediction, at least. Um, whatever young quarterback they get, uh, I think Urban Meyer definitely is a great coach to be around. He he knows how to win. I mean, he won with two different programs. That's very unheard of. Nick Saban's one of the only other people to do it, I believe. Um, so it's a very elite class, and that doesn't come from luck. That comes from good coaching. And Urban Meyer also has a lot of connections, uh, whether that's NFL or college. So he's going to probably build a really good coaching staff in the NFL, which uh, you can put your young quarterback around. So I think Urban Meyer's like the perfect fit, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I do have a question, though, because a couple of years ago, and this is like 10 years ago, Nick Saban did coach in the NFL like for a year or two with the Dolphins, but he kind of sucked. Um, if you could pick one team for Nick Saban to go to to be the head coach of an NFL, who would it be? For me, I could see the Bengals. I think with that offense, that would be really neat. Um, that's my pick. I think Nick Saban to Cincinnati. If I had to pick a team, that would be pretty awesome in my eyes. Nick Saban, yeah, he's a he he's really good at just building literally a winning culture. Um, if I had to pick a team, though, I would honestly – let's see, that's a tough one. I would go – I honestly think him with the uh, – I'm blanking. The Panthers, I know they have Matt Rule. Ooh. But I think, I think him with the Panthers would be, like, really good. And Matt Rule has done a pretty good job, don't get me wrong, but – for just going hypothetical, I definitely think Nick Saban would fit perfectly because they have a really uh, solid defensive core. Um, they could upgrade a couple weapons, um, maybe get a better quarterback in the future. But their defense, I think it has a lot of work to be done to it, and I think that's where Nick Saban thrives is building a great defense. I think Nick Saban and the Panthers would be like – that would be like a dream come true for both sides, I feel like. That would be a good move. So talking about some of the other coaching hires, we have Arthur Smith – to the Falcons. Um, For me, this was a very – I don't love it. I don't hate it. I think that there is some potential there with the Falcons' offense. I think he could make Atlanta a top-five unit in the NFL, which is good. However, that's not the Falcons' issue. Their defense has been really bad. However, I did watch Arthur Smith's press conference with the Falcons, at least like 10 minutes of it. He seems like a very hardworking person, and he's very reliable. I could see Smith being with the team for like three, four seasons, being decent, and then getting fired and moving on. Or I could see him being very good. I don't think he'll be terrible. When I saw it, I was like, that's good. I don't think it's fantastic. I would have really liked him to the Lions um, because – I, I think the Detroit needs a spark, and he brings that. But um, Mason, what's your take on Arthur Smith to, to Atlanta? No, yeah, I completely agree with you. I think it's a very it – well, time will tell with that hiring for sure, but like with all of these. But I think this one for sure because, like you said, the Falcons' issue is definitely not their offense. I feel like you can get any somewhat uh, decent offensive coordinator. He's going to make that offensive thrive. I mean, you have Matt Ryan. Calvin Ridley and Julio it's very hard to mess that up um but yeah I think Arthur Smith he he did change that Titans offense um he really in the two years he's been there that he really flipped that uh, offense around and they've been honestly good you know Derrick Henry Ryan Tannehill Hill having career years under Arthur Smith so maybe he bring, maybe the Falcons saw something but definitely not a fit that I like expected but definitely something that could be amazing if it works out yeah, I do think he has a high ceiling. Also, this is something I thought about. If the Fal- you know, the Falcons, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones are definitely towards the tail end of their careers. So if they get a new quarterback, you want someone like an offensive person like Smith. Next up, we have Brandon Staley for the Chargers. If For me, I would have switched Staley to the Falcons and Smith to the Chargers. That would have been perfect because, like I said, with the Arthur Smith, they fit their pros, and the Chargers' defense has great talent. Duran James, Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram. 
So Brandon Staley is going to make those players better. However, for me, it's like you really need to build, build around Justin Herbert. And could Staley do that? Yeah, he could. But is that something that will happen? I don't know. Also, kind of a hot take. I don't think he's as fantastic as people say he is. Um, I know that sounds weird. He's, he's definitely a good coach um, for the defensive side of the ball. You have Aaron Donald and Jaron Ramsey, arguably the two best defensive players on the team. You're going to have a great defense. And the Rams did have some games where they allowed a lot of points, like the Bills, the Jets. I just don't think he, he's as excellent as people say. However, if he does bring a good offensive person from Los Angeles, which I think could easily happen. You know, there's a lot of good people in the Sean McVay. I think that it could be good. I don't know. I just thought that was a very odd fit. I would like to see Staley to the Falcons or the Texans possibly. But, yeah, that's what I have to say about that one. Yeah, no, I definitely don't. This might be my least favorite hiring. Um, I don't like the fit at all. I don't I don't understand why you'd hire a defensive-minded guy when you have a, a young star uh, blossoming in Herbert. I feel like you want to get a guy that's – offensive minded so he can just continue to elevate Herbert because I mean Lynn was definitely not a bad coach but he definitely he definitely uh, had his ceiling and I think you could have got a guy like Arthur Smith or maybe even a B enemy or a some other offensive guy that would have just been a better fit and I think the Staley hiring I think Staley's very overrated as of now because I think a lot of people just looked on paper and saw oh he had one of the best defenses like yeah, you're going to have one of the best defenses no matter what when you have Aaron Donald blitzing the quarterback every play and Jalen Ramsey locking up the number one guy. I mean, it's not – it doesn't take rocket science to make a good defense of those two guys, in my opinion. Those are like – those are two superstars where you can't have a bad defense if both of them are on, are on your uh, team. So I think the fit's weird, and I, I'm not a big fan of the hiring at all, actually. Yeah, I think I like it a bit more than you because I think that he can do something with some of the Chargers – players but we both agree we think he's a bit overrated um that's it for permanent head coaching hires there's talks that dan campbell will be the lions head coach who's the saints tight end coach currently uh terrible move if they do this uh i the lines frustrate me i'm not a detroit fan at all but the guy is just so like it's Matt Patricia 2.0. Now, I know Matt Patricia had some off-the-field issues. I don't think Dan Campbell brings him, but I just saw this. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, Detroit. If they do go through with this, I could see him being fired in four years. I think the Lions are such a mediocre team that they need a really bright – per or like a spark. Able. Now, if the Lions like were just – winning a Super Bowl, then I would like to hire, like, Dan Campbell if he went to a team. Like, let's say Sean Payton retired, him being the Saints head coach. I would like it. But to a team that needs rebuilding, I just don't see him doing that. And then I will mention the Eagles head coach. Well, actually, before I talk about the Eagles, what's your thoughts on Dan Campbell most likely going to Detroit? Um, yeah, I don't – it's a really – it's a really weird fit. Maybe they saw something in him that – just sold them, but uh, I agree with you. I think the Lions are in a weird state where they don't really – they're not – they can't contend now at all. Um, but they're also not in a place where they have enough young players where they are considered to have a bright future. They're like – they need to blow it up, in my opinion. They got to trade Stafford. And I don't think that's a good uh, – that's good to put a coach in when you're trading away Stafford and possibly letting Galladay and Marvin Jones walk in free agency. I think you need to – Maybe get a guy who's a veteran coach, who like an Urban Meyer to the Jaguars as a veteran coach that can help build up an organization. Um, so, yeah, I don't really like the Dan Campbell thing. He's not even like an offensive coordinator. He's a tight ends coach. It's just a really – it was really odd. He came out of nowhere. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think especially – yeah, you know, someone like, you know, like Robert Sala was gone. Urban Meyer was gone, as we mentioned. But still, it's – yeah, not that great. And then the Eagles, I have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> um, uh, well, there's so many names to talk about. We'll just talk about it when it happens. Um, so that's it for the head coaching. Um, so then we'll talk about the playoff games that happened. 
this past weekend, starting with the Saturday games, Green Bay, Los Angeles, two great teams. My biggest takeaway was Matt LaFour is a really good coach. I don't think he really gets the respect that he deserves. I mean, he was going up against Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, with one of the Packers' offensive linemen being out. And Aaron Rodgers didn't get sacked once. Yes, Aaron Rodgers is fantastic. He's great. He's all these things. But I was just so impressed with Matt LaFour and the Packers offense. They look so smooth. Um, I, I think that they're honestly my Super Bowl favorite. And then Ravens-Bills, not the game I was expecting, but I will say that this was the Bills game to show that, hey, our defense is not to be forgotten, which a lot of people, kind of including me, were like, how is this Bills defense? I think we saw that they can step up. So. Those are my thoughts on the two Saturday games. I think that the Ravens could have went on a potential Super Bowl run. I just think they need a wide receiver. And then the Rams, I don't think were there either. So, Mason, what's your take on the two Saturday games we just had? Yeah, no, Matt LaFleur definitely uh, cemented himself as being a really great coach. My biggest takeaway is that that offensive line performed amazing when they are missing David Bakhtiari who's their best offensive lineman I mean Aaron Donald was not an easy person to shut down and Elton Jenkins uh, all day Saturday was shutting him down and I know uh, Donald had a torn rib cartilage or whatever but I mean that's still an impressive feat to not allow any sacks against that Rams D line so I was really impressed by that kept Rodgers clean uh, mostly the whole game and when Rodgers is clean, it's just, it's over. I mean, it's it's very hard to stop a, an Aaron Rodgers who's not getting pressured. Um, and I also like them as Super Bowl favorites as well. Um, Rodgers is having debatably his best year of his life, and he's like 37, which is remarkable. And then you have, um, I'm blanking out of the Bills and uh, Ravens game. I think that game, it was really disappointing um, for the Ravens. I think Bills have a lot to prove next week. Um, I think it's – obviously it's going to be a Super Bowl uh, winner you're in. But I think they have a lot to prove after not putting up a lot of points like they usually do. Um, I think Lamar Jackson, very uh, – he gets overhated a lot. Um, that's coming from a Cardinals fan who literally is Kyler Lamar debates all day. So I know what it's like <laughs> seeing Lamar hate. Um but, no, he gets uh, overhated. He had that really bad pick six. But, I mean, it's just like his – Justin Tucker was missing kicks. It just didn't look like the Ravens. And I the Ravens need to go and – they need to spend big money on a receiver or trade for one because you can't have Des Bryant as your number one or number two option in 2021. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a lot of the points I brought up in my video I did about the Ravens. If you all want to check it out, go more in depth. I will say this about the Kyler Lamar debate. I don't like it because they're very different. They're very different play style-wise. The way they run, they're just very different quarterbacks, the way they process the field. But I see how people compare them. I agree that Baltimore looked off. And I, to be honest, if we have another one of these playoff losses, if John Harbaugh was fired, I would be, like, fine with it because he got the Super Bowl. But the Chargers game, the Titans game, and now the Bills game, it's like we didn't even show up in them. If it was at least close, fine. Like, if you look at – I was talking, I think, to my mom or dad about this or something, but, like, the 2015 packers Cardinals game that we were talking about earlier, what a fantastic game. Everyone talks about the Cardinals winning. No one talks about the Packers losing. If you put up a good fight in the playoffs, people are going to respect you. But the Ravens haven't done that. So if we have another, if the Baltimore Ravens have another one of these losses, then I would be like, okay, it's time for some of the coaches to go. Um, do you have anything to add on, Mason, to that? Yeah, so speaking of the losses, I really think um, if the Ravens do end up uh, losing another playoff game, I know John Harbaugh is the legend for you know, Baltimore, but especially after last year, you have the unanimous MVP – the best rushing offense, one of the best rushing offenses of all time, a stellar defense with Calais Campbell. Or no, it was not no, that year, right? It was – they had a good defense that year, though, anyways. And uh, you're 14-2 and two and you lost to the 6 seed Titans or the – yeah, the 6 seed Titans. It's just, it's just unacceptable in my opinion. Um, I know those losses happen, but then 
that's three playoff losses in a row. I think that, especially as a Ravens fan like you are, I think that's really frustrating that you get uh, you get that far just to just to lose like that. Especially like if they're not close, like you said, especially the Bills game, it just felt like a drag. And I mean, honestly, it just it just felt off when Justin Tucker's missing kicks. It's just you know something's not right. Um, I agree with you. Tucker and the Ravens team is off. Going to Sunday, um, the Chiefs-Browns game, it's still weird to think that the Cleveland Browns were one game away from the AFC Championship, and I don't think they are a pretender at all. I don't think they deserve to win that game because, for me, the Chiefs were blowing them out, and then Mahomes gets injured, and that's when the Browns start to gain momentum. My thing is you should be able – you deserve to win a game when you beat them at full strength. And with Mahomes in there, it was like the Browns were going to lose. So, you know, Chad Henney in there was kept a bit close, and then that cool ending was neat. Um, the Chiefs look really good. I hope Mahomes is okay. My thoughts is, is that Henney will play in the AFC Championship game. If the Chiefs win, I think that Mahomes will start in the Super Bowl. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, Mahomes – could play in the AC Championship game. I would love that. But my guess is if he plays and they win, Mahomes will be in the Super Bowl. That makes the most sense. Um, I think Cleveland has some good talent there. They just are a very strong team. I like Kevin Stefanski. They had an incredible season, to be honest. And then we had the Bucks saints game, which um, was very emotional, the whole Drew Brees thing. Um, Tampa Bay looks really good. Uh, they just are very – good team with a good offense and a good defense. Um, I thought the game was kind of a bit boring at parts, but there were some fun plays. And, man, that post-game stuff with Drew Brees coming off the field and then looking back at it was, oh, in the fields. And then right after the game, I don't know if you saw the clip, but it was him and Brady. Brady was, like, throwing some dimes to um, <laughs> Drew Brees' kids. And Brady walks off, like, with his football bag, and Breeze stays with his kids. Like, that is just a storybook ending. It sucks that the Saints lost, but uh, overall, it's a good game. I'm excited for the championship games. Um, and, Mason, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, no, the Browns-Chiefs game, I think that game was very uh, entertaining towards the end because it just got closer. But a lot of people are saying the refs robbed the Browns because of that fumble. And the the helmet to helmet non call, but it's like, uh, in football those are gonna happen. There's gonna be a lot of bad calls. I mean, the Saints got robbed of a Super Bowl appearance because of the Rams, uh, pen, uh, pass interference. But I mean, that was kind of early in the game, and I'm sorry, but when Chad Henney's in the game and you lose him, I really there's no excuses for you. Um, <laughs> Mahomes Mahomes wasn't playing. I mean, come on, the Browns had a chance to uh, either a get the go-ahead touchdown, or uh, B, stop Chad Henney from running 14 <laughs> yards and then converting a fourth down. I mean, like, it's just – I mean, but honestly, that's a great season for the Browns. Uh, they exceeded my expectations. I thought maybe a wild card, first-round exit kind of team, but they, they fought to the very end. And I think Kevin Stefanski is a good coach for that team. And I think, uh, I think the Browns should look to trade Odell because it just looks like Baker's more comfortable out there without having to force feed him the ball. Maybe Odell can somehow go to the Ravens if they want to trade in the division or something. That would be kind of cool. But uh, moving on to uh, the next game, Saints-Buccaneers. I'm not going to lie, that game kind of made me depressed because Drew Brees, just his last couple throws are all picks. I'm like, wow, this is how he's going to go out. It's just sad. But um, that game was – I think that game was just, like, really cool to, see, to watch just because it's like Tom Brady and Drew Brees, their first playoff match uh, ever. and I think if Drew Brees wanted to lose to someone for his last game, it'd probably be Tom Brady. And um, they have a lot of respect for each other. And like you said, they saw they were um, they saw each other after the game. Tom Brady was throwing passes to Drew Brees' kids. Uh, fun fact: Drew Brees is Drew Brees' kid caught more passes than Michael Thomas that day. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, I don't know. That's my thoughts on that game. Yeah, I saw a, a, a meme on this, but I agree. I like how Breeze lost to a quarterback who's better than him. 
it would have been very weird if he lost to like, I don't know, someone else, but him losing to Tom Brady, it's like, it's Tom Brady. Um, I will say this, if Breeze retires, it's going to be tough. Because, like, Eli last year was like, yeah, okay, he had the two Super Bowls, cool. But, I don't know, he was kind of – the Andrew Luck thing was very shocking. But I feel like if Breeze retires, I'll just be really sad. He's a fantastic player, um, and there's a lot of great things to say about him. Um, but moving on, Mason, what do you think will be – the Super Bowl matchup, and what do you want it to be? So what do you think it'll be, and what's what what's your, your dream Super Bowl matchup out of the four possibilities? I think it's going to be Packers – okay, this is hard. One. I think it's going to be Packers-Bills, just if – because I don't think Mahomes is playing. Um, it's very hard to overcome a concussion in a league. Um, what I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be oh, – wait, no. No, what I want it to be is – what I want it to be is Packers versus Chiefs. Um I know people don't want to see Mahomes again, but I honestly think him and Rodgers, like, because in my opinion, they're the two best quarterbacks in the NFL. I think them dueling each other in the Super Bowl would just be, I think that would be one of the most, like, like memorable Super Bowls of all time. Um, their, their play styles are very similar. You have Rodgers coming off a career, you have Mahomes just doing Mahomes things, I think. That would be super awesome. What I don't want to happen, I know Tom Brady's a GOAT, but I just don't – I hate seeing Tom Brady in the Super Bowl all the time. I want to see other people. I want to see – I want to see Rodgers again. We haven't seen Rodgers in a while. I want to see him compete in the Super Bowl and get another ring because Rodgers deserves another ring in my opinion. Yeah, so I have a lot of thoughts for this. I would love Packers, Chiefs. Mahomes and Rodgers are great. And also their defenses are kind of about the same. So it could be a game where a potential defensive star wins it. I think that would be great. Um, probably Rodgers' last Super Bowl appearance, possibly against Mahomes. And the two have never played each other. Packers played the Chiefs last year, but Mahomes was injured for that game. Um, it was Matt Castle. But still a good game. And Rodgers and Mahomes do those like State Farm commercials together, which is cool to see them there. But playing on the big field would be cool. As I mentioned, Andy Reid or Matt LaFour in the Super Bowl, he's done great. And Andy Reid, as an uh, Eagles fan, would be cool to see him go back to back. Um, so that would be awesome. Um, then we will have the other matchups. The Buccaneers, I like Tom Brady. And if he got another ring, I, it wouldn't bother me. And it would be cool to see like Mike Evans get one and Bruce Arians get one. The Buccaneers just seem like a team that is like an ultimate team in Madden. They just like threw people on the team and like go. Like the Bills, Packers, and Chiefs, I think, have more technique. And not to say the Buccaneers don't. They just don't seem like a team with an identity. They just seem like, okay, Tom Brady's going to chuck it up to people we just signed, um, to be <laughs> honest. Um, Buccaneers, Chiefs is probably the bottom of my list if we got it. It would be cool. It would still be a great matchup, but it would be like, oh, okay. I could see a Packers-Bills game being great. A lot of people want that. But I think what would be really fun is Buccaneers-Bills because Tom Brady, former Patriot, playing one of his division rivals in the Super Bowl, his former division rivals would be cool. That would be a really great game. Uh, the Bills' defense is great. I think that the Bills are going to win the AFC Championship game. They just look really good right now. Uh, I think that the, the Chiefs don't have an answer for Stephon Diggs. Um, I just don't see a player that can cover them. And uh, I think the Bills will win that game. The NFC wins a coin toss. I could see the snow really affecting Tom Brady and the Packers defense playing very well. Or I could see a you know a Brady comeback. I think the game will be great no matter what happens. And the fact that we get Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers is awesome in like this championship game. I think all four men two years we've had some very unique teams like Tampa Bay and Buffalo in the mix, and I wouldn't mind Kansas City playing again, especially like you said against Aaron Rodgers. So that's that's my take on that. Yeah, no, I think what's great about this year's uh, um, Super Bowl matchups is that no matter who's going to be playing in the Super Bowl, it's going to be two um, great quarterbacks going at it. And sometimes we don't get that. I mean, 
a couple of years ago we had Jared Goff versus uh, Tom Brady. Goff's not bad, but he's not an elite quarterback. And then you had Jimmy Garoppolo against Mahomes. Again, Jimmy Garoppolo's good, not elite quarterback. But you have, you have either Rodgers or Brady coming from the NFC, two future Hall of Famers. Then you have Mahomes and Allen who are the future. So it's going to be a uh, clash versus the old Hall of Fame quarterback versus the new. And I think that's going to be a really cool dynamic that – Honestly, we haven't seen in a while, probably since 2015, uh, Broncos and Panthers. So I think that's going to be a really – Super Bowl is going to be amazing this year, I feel like. Yeah, all the games have been really good this season. And I also think the defenses could have a tail because the Buccaneers play the best defense out of the three. Bills have Tredavious White. Chiefs and Packers are on the same level. So we could see how these defenses all, all – right, I, I usually – there's a match of them, like, I don't want to see it all. I don't feel that way this year. And then, Mason, one last topic before we end this out. Uh, kind of a big one, but where do you want to see Deshaun Watson go? Speaking of great quarterbacks, Watson almost had 5,000 passing yards this season, and there's been signs of him not liking Houston. So where do you want to see him go um, in the off season? Uh I have two main – Places that I've been thinking would be a great fits. I think um, him with the Dolphins, I think that'd be a really cool fit. Um, Brian Flores is an amazing coach, and uh, the Texans they would could get back uh, two, so they could build around him. And but the Dolphins, I'm sure they love Tua, but I mean when you have an unproven quarterback versus a top five quarterback, I'm going to take the top five any day. Um, and I think him that dynamic could be really cool. Um, and then him. Um, on the Panthers, I think that would be a super cool team because I think – so it seems like Joe Brady's going to come back as the offensive coordinator, and I think he's done a really good job this year. And I think that offense is, like, very based around screen plays and then deep ball plays. And I think him and Robbie Anderson and uh, DJ Moore could be a really cool trio to watch. Yeah, we've seen Watson have success with Will Fuller, who very similar to Rob. Anderson Watson just has a beautiful deep ball, so I think he could do well with Carolina. I really like that fit. I think that for me, as someone who likes the Panthers a decent amount, Teddy Bridgewater is not cutting it. I don't know if I like the idea of drafting a new guy. I don't know. I feel like a lot of these, like the Panthers defense is young. They have a lot of young playmakers. They want to win now. I would love Watson there. Um, Dolphins would be good. I think that could be potentially really good. The other team I have is the Washington football team. I think for me, he goes to a really great coach in Ron Rivera. He has Terry McLaurin, Michael, uh, no, Logan Thomas, <laughs> Antonio Gibson. You have some good playmakers there, and you have a great defense. So I think that would be a really good fit for Watson. I do think he will get traded. I don't see him staying on the Texans. And if that happens, the Texans are a complete mess. Like, who's their quarterback going to be? I have literally no idea. Like, maybe they could sign, like, a Teddy Bridgewater, but Houston's a complete mess. I think if they trade Watson, they're going to be terrible for about a couple years to come. I just don't. The DeAndre Hopkins trade was bad for them, as we've talked about multiple times on this show. But – at least you could say in some way of defense, oh, Hopkins was like 28. Watson, if he gets traded away, that would be probably the worst trade ever in the NFL. I just don't see the Texans recovering from that. Uh, if Texans do trade uh, Watson, I definitely think they're going to keep – they're going to hold on to him for a good while just and see what the best offer is because a lot of teams are going to call um, – teams already have called, I believe, the Panthers and the Dolphins have already called uh, – to discuss, but the Texans really haven't said they're trading him yet because they're still trying to rebuild that relationship with Watson. But if I'm the Texans, I am going straight to the Dolphins and asking for their number three pick and Tua and maybe a couple other assets because at least that gives you something to build around. You get your number three pick back, which is a little <laughs> weird. That should be picked already, but you traded for Laramie Tunsil. That was a bizarre trade, too. I mean, he's a good tackle, not worth the third overall pick. And then you can get to a – I mean, Tua's not uh, proven himself yet, but that's definitely a quarterback that I wouldn't mind to build around if I have to trade Watson, you know. That would be very weird. That would just be very weird. I think if that were to happen, 
you would have a new coach, potentially Eric Bieniemy or someone, plus a free overall pick, so you could get Devontae Smith. So things are not looking um, too bad. There's just so interesting about young quarterbacks because, like, Watson, probably going to get traded. Wentz, there's that drama. <laughs> um, where does Carson Wentz go? I have no idea. Um, and then you so also so. – <laughs> Um, Dak Prescott, does he come back? There's room. Sean McVay's relationship not being good. Like all these young quarterbacks, they're kind of, some of them are not doing well. So that's why I think that it's so cool. We have Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. That's why I would be happy if Mahomes won another Super Bowl, just, you know, while that window is there. But it's just so weird. That whole Rams report was weird because it seems like the Rams have a good locker room. Jared Goff just posted something about like, oh, good season and stuff. So that uh, that might just be made up. I have no idea. That kind of like came out of left field. Vay's just a guy where he's he's uh, he likes what he has, but if there's an upgrade, he's definitely going to go for it. And I think that's how he's treating the Goff situation where he's like, you know, you're, you're good. You can get it done. But if there's an upgrade, I'm going to take that over you, you know, it's just how he is as a coach, which is why he's so successful because he's not like uh, content with uh, average. He wants the best at what he can get. Yeah. I'm at uh, Deshaun Watson to the Rams. That would be. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> please, please keep him out of the division. That'd be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Him and McVay would be insane. That that would be crazy. That could happen. You gotta agree, Kyler versus Deshaun would be fun. Twice a year, that would be really cool. That would be cool. Anyways, speaking of cool, that was a nice time on the podcast, Mason. <laughs> I don't know what that's. <laughs> that was a terrible. <laughs> that was a terrible. That was a terrible segue. But uh, thank you for joining me, Mason. Next time we record one of these, the Super Bowl matchup will probably will be decided or it would have been played. So excited to see how that goes. Do you have any final thoughts? Um, once again, thanks for joining me. No, nah, just thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Yep, and we'll see you all next time. Take care and have a good one.